Hi and welcome, my name is Julianne Cost, and we're going to take a look at the new ways that you can selectively blur your images in Photoshop CS6. Let's start with this image and I'll go under the filter menu. I have assigned a keyboard shortcut to field blur, but selecting any one of these, either field, iris, or tilt shift, will bring up these on-screen controls. You'll see over here on the right hand side, here's my blur tools. It automatically chose field blur, but we can toggle that off for a moment and instead go over to the tilt shift option. Now, we get an overlay on top of the image and we can reposition this tilt shift blur by dragging in the center point. We can also make the blur greater or less by dragging the wheel here or of course you can move over to the panel and change the blur slider. We can also rotate the blur either by clicking on one of these circles or you can actually click anywhere outside of this area and drag in order to rotate this. Now, if I just click, I'm going to actually add a second tilt shift blur. So I don't want to do that. I'll hit the delete key and that'll get rid of that one. And we'll come back to our original pin that we laid down. And I'll just reposition that on top of this flower. Now you can see that I can change the width of area that I either want to be unaffected, to not have the blur, and then this area right here is going to be the transitional area between what's not affected and what is completely affected by whatever value I put in the blur slider here. So let's go ahead and just rearrange these a little bit. I'm going to scoot this one out so that the flower is not blurred here. And then I'm going to make this a little bit shorter so that it quickly blurs the rest of the image. If I want to see what this looks like without the interface, I can tap the H key to temporarily hide it. If I want to add the bokeh effect, I can use my blur effects panel down here and move the light bokeh slider over to the right. Now I want to make sure that I have a lot of blur applied so that we can see this effect. As I scoot it over further and further, you'll start to see the circles appearing in my image. If I wanted to add a little bit more color to those, I could use the color slider underneath. I can also tell Photoshop exactly what the range is where it should start making this effect. I'll go ahead and keep it right around 200 there. I can also tap the P key to turn the preview on and off. As soon as I'm satisfied, we'll hit return and Photoshop will go ahead and apply that filter. As we can see, there was the before and there's after, and you can see that by blurring all of those distracting elements, we're really able to focus more on the primary subject of the image. Okay, let's go ahead and move over to this next image here. I'll use the customized keyboard shortcut, the Command B that I assigned, and again, I'm going to switch from Field Blur, but this time I'm going to go down to the Iris Blur option. Now, let's go ahead and turn up the blur so that it's really heavy so we can see what's going on. Similar to the tilt shift, we have the pin in the middle where we can move around the center, and that would be the area that's not blurred. We've got the wheel so we can dial in how much blur we want. And then we can make the larger circle out here as large or as small as we want to obviously encompass more or less area in the image. These small pins determine the transitional area. So you can see when I move them into the center, there's kind of a slower transition between what is not blurred and what becomes blurred. As I move them out to the edge, it becomes a little bit more abrupt. But one of the great things that you can do is hold down the Option or the Alt key, and then as you drag the pins, they move independently. So this enables me to reposition them a little bit better. In addition, I can change this outer shape and make it more rectangular by clicking on this square icon here. Then if I position my cursor outside of it, I can click and drag in order to rotate it. Again, be careful because if you simply click, you'll add a second iris blur. I don't want that, so I'll tap the delete key and then I'll click on the initial blur in order to activate it again. So now I'll hold down the Option key and I'll just scoot in these two dots and maybe the bottom one as well, but I'll go ahead and elongate the one up here so that it covers the ear. Again, I need to click and rotate just a little bit to position that 
and then we can tap the H key to hide it and H key to bring it back. Obviously, we've overdone it a little bit here, so I'll just bring back the amount of blur. Now, by tapping the P key, we can turn on and off the preview. So there's before and there's after. That might be a little too subtle, so let's increase the blur. There's before and there's after. So you can see this is a really quick way to add a blur with kind of a little bit more control maybe than the tilt shift. But let's delete this for a minute and go up to the field blur because the field blur is actually the blur that you're going to have the most control over. Just like the other blurs, you can set down as many pins as you want. So let's start here in the upper left. I know I want this area to be very blurry, so I'll go ahead and dial that in. Then the lower right, I probably want about the same amount, so let's dial that in as well. But obviously over the bunny, I don't want it to be blurred, so I'll remove the blur from that pin. I'll click in the upper right, we'll go ahead and blur that, and the lower right, and we'll blur that as well. Now I think probably this one is a little too blurred, so we can back off, and this one too. So you can see how adjustable these are, and in fact, if you tap the M key, you can actually see the mask that's being drawn. So in this area where the mask is black, we are protecting that area, so there's no blur being applied. Where the mask is white, it's absolutely being blurred. And as we reposition these pins, let me just move one really close for a moment, tap the M key again, you can see that Photoshop has automatically changed the mask. So it's interactively making the transition between the different amounts of blur that are being applied to each one of the pins. So obviously this one's a little bit too close, so let's go ahead and move that back away. And I'm also losing the blur like right here on his little whiskers. So let's add another pin, remove the blur there. We'll add another pin up here to the ear and remove the blur there. And without spending too much time doing this, I think you guys can, can see what's happening. Again, if I tap the M key, we can see that mask. Tap the M key and it goes away. And of course, I'm kind of overdoing it here because each one of these pins has such a significant blur applied to it. You would probably be a lot more subtle in your work. But let's go ahead and just tap Enter or Return to apply that so that we can see the before and after. So you can see I've really added probably way too much blur, but I just wanted to make sure that, that you could see how extreme you could take this effect. So there's a quick view of the iris, the tilt shift, and the field blur in Photoshop CS6. My name's Julianne Koss. Thanks for watching.